Hi, my name is Sarah, and today is my second set of reviews in my 100 books in 100 days, 2021. This week was a really solid week. I actually had four fives, two fours, and four threes. So super solid all the way around. Without spending too much time, let's get into my reviews. My first five-star review is Sky Hunter by Mary Lou. This book blew me away. It was so good, and I just had no expectations going into it. I would say it's kind of dystopian, and the overall feel is a mix of pretty primitive with very advanced. Essentially, the setup is that long ago, there was really advanced humans that lived on the planet. Then, for whatever reason, they went extinct, and now a new set of peoples are basically picking up the remnants of what they left over. And so you have this mix of really high tech from what they could salvage from the past with like super low tech because it's essentially like the Middle Ages again. In the midst of this, there's one group that's like trying to create an empire out of the entire planet, and then the last holdouts. Incredibly cool sci-fi elements. Overall, I enjoyed the relationship between the two main characters. And just in general, I had fun with this book. A lot of fun. Going along with that, my next five-star review is for Iron Widow. It's another one that actually really knocked my socks off. At the beginning, I thought it was a little bit cheesy because you could definitely tell there was a super happy anime influence. Like to the point it was a little bit cringy. But after the first like 30 or so pages, it kind of mellows out and it becomes just this really cool story about essentially a revenge tale of this, our main character trying to get accepted into the order that killed her sister and get revenge on the man who killed her sister. And she is ruthless. Like in general, I just really connected with her. I was rooting for her the whole time. Like another plus for me was there ended up being a poly relationship in this, which I just like think is so cool to see in a YA novel. Like I feel like you don't see that very, very often in books and I was excited to see it in this one. My only small criticism was the ending it felt really rushed. And there was a couple pieces that like, weren't my favorite plot points at the very, very end, but I'm hoping those ultimately get fixed in the sequel if there is one. Our five-star review is the book on Nazism. The book was a really cool guide as an intro for somebody who doesn't know much about Nazism. It laid out what the religion was about, essentially like the central war and the origin myth of it. And it was just so, so interesting. And I feel like a really unknown part of Christian history there is more information on Gnosticism because I think just in general, it's a really interesting take to learn about and to understand, especially as we see Christianity today in its pretty well-defined sex. It was very short. It was pretty succinct. I think it was only like three hours, but it jammed a lot of information in really quickly. So I really appreciated that. Final five-star review is The Love Hypothesis. This was so cute. By far the best contemporary romance novel I've read in a while. The main characters are both scientists, which I think is kind of unique. I mean, I've been reading more unique contemporary romance novels, but this just hit the spot for me. I really liked the like sunshine, gloomy one concept and just how aware it was of itself just was fantastic. Overall, like, I can't wait to see this author do more work because I just had so much fun. I wanted to keep turning pages. It was so good. Four star review is The Amazons. A fiction book centering around the Scythians of the Pontic Steppe was very well done. I don't think there is a ton written on the Scythians. I know I read one book specifically on Scythians in general where this one focused more on Scythian women. But I wish there was more. Again, this is a part of history that I think is under-talked about, underappreciated, because there's so many cool pieces. I know that because of the nomadic lifestyle of the Scythians, it's kind of hard to keep track of written records and stuff like that, if the specific tribes even had written records, which a lot of times it, there's not really evidence for that. But it just feels like there's so much that you can get out of this group of warrior women who fought alongside men, who sometimes even had stories of having tribes completely of their own, the connection with the horses and how on the Pontic Steppe, being a nomadic lifestyle, it's kind of the great equalizer. You need everybody to pull their weight. And so everyone needs to be a warrior. Everyone needs to be able to gather food. And the fact that using horses and bows 
kind of doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman if you can pull a bow back and hit the enemy just as well. I read one fiction book about Amazons when I was a kid that was about like the truly Pontic stuff Amazons, but I just wish there were more. This seems like such a cool treasure trove of ideas for stories, and I feel like there should be so much more fiction written about the Amazons. Next top four star review is For the Wolf. So this was a Little Red Riding Hood retelling, and overall I really like the take that this author took. I enjoyed all the different twists and turns. I thought that the kind of ceremony that she created around um, Red going to the wolf was really interesting. I enjoyed the relationship between the wolf and Red. What knocked it down from a five-star review for me was the magic system and the ending, and those kind of go hand in hand. Ultimately, this was a very loose magic system, and because of that, when you get to the ending and things just kind of happen and the answer is magic, it doesn't feel earned in the way that it would have felt if there was more rules around it or if earlier in the book we understand what the boundaries were for this specific magic system. The third star review is My Heart of Chainsaw. This was a horror book where essentially really centered around a horror lover who ends up getting swept up in the plot of a slasher movie. This girl knows everything about slasher movies and so there's like pretty nuanced commentary about like what's happening in a slasher movie and it's actually like pretty interesting getting all that information. However, the narrator is chaotic and very hard to follow and very hard to understand what is real and what is not. It didn't work for me. I overall appreciated everything that I got out of the book, but it was kind of a pain to get through just because of how chaotic the voice was that you had narrating it. Three star review is Saraland. I would say 75% of the novel kind of feels like a literary fiction novel, and then the last 25% becomes a sci fi novel, and it's a very hard switchover. Like, Yes, there's signs in the first 75% that it's going to be a sci-fi novel or like it could be, but there's also ways that you could have interpreted that, like that it was all in the narrator's head. To go along with that, the first 75% of the book is it's pretty slow. The pacing is a little bit hard. Overall, I appreciated everything that the Arthur was trying to go for. I think the overall message and themes of the books are very important and I appreciate what was happening. I just wish that there was a little bit more of the ratio was swung back towards the action and the sci-fi elements, but that's also just kind of my personal preference as somebody who's not like the biggest literary fiction fan. Kind of going along with that, my next three-star review is another literary fiction book, Milk Fed. I read both of these books kind of on the hangover from the rest of my literary fiction books from the first group, and I think that was just kind of a bad decision. Milk Fed overall wasn't too bad. Um, there's a lot more just like, hey, we're gonna wander over here, and we're gonna wander over there. And just this wandering plot that didn't do a ton for me. The narrator's perspective was really interesting, and seeing her kind of come to terms with the different changes that she's seeing in her life was really interesting, but it also felt like just a lot of pop psychology and the ending was like really kind of unfulfilling. <laughs> so that kind of sucked. But overall, I mean, it, it wasn't a hard read. It just wasn't a super fulfilling read to me. So our review is Spartacus and the Slave Wars. This book provided pretty good information if you haven't already read history books about that time from similar sources. The hard part was for me, I felt like this book focused way more on a lot of the things surrounding the environment where Spartacus was coming up in versus Spartacus himself. I feel like the title is kind of like a misnomer. Like this book was really more about the time period of the revolt led by Spartacus more so than anything about Spartacus himself. Like I don't even think they start really talking about the man himself until like halfway through this book. And it just didn't give you very much information. It wasn't very unique. But overall, if you're just trying to learn just this snippet of history, I think it's like a decent read. On to my group three books. And group three is Augustus by Adrian Goldsworthy. This is a biography of the first Emperor Augustus's life. This is not my first biography specifically about Augustus, but my understanding is that this biography 
focuses more on the middle of his life instead of just the really interesting part right at the beginning of his life where he's, you know, taking over the leadership from Julius Caesar and having his fight with Anthony and Cleopatra. This is a portion of his life that I don't know a ton about. You know, you kind of get the stuff at the beginning, you get the stuff at the end, but in between, there's kind of this connection point because he goes from being this like cunning 19 year old that took the Roman world by storm to kind of this character in his 70s that's kind of just considered somebody that can be walked all over. So I'm hoping I can get a little bit more context about how this man develops throughout his life. My next book is Foundation by Isaac Asimov. This came up in my library and I got super excited because I've been trying to read more Asimov. I know that he's one of the greats of science fiction. And I know that the Foundation series in particular is one of those books that's like required reading for a sci-fi lover. My next book is Before We Disappear by Sean David Hutchinson. This book is about two magician assistants in the early 1900s. I think it's about the Seattle, Alaska Seattle Expedition World's Fair that took place in the early 1900s. I feel like this is a time period where you don't usually have fantasy books take place in, so hopefully this author will really pull it off. This book is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I know that this has been all over the place on booktube and bookstagram so interested to see what i think of it i've always been a little bit worried because it doesn't feel like it has the amount of action i usually get excited about but i'm willing to give it a try on the cemetery theme with our october theme my next book is pet cemetery by stephen king I've not read very much Stephen King. My first Stephen King book was actually read earlier this year. It was The Institute. I haven't read any of his horror works. So as we're in October, I thought it was the perfect time to give one a try. My next book is Silent Patient by Alex McLeodes. I read The Maidens earlier this year. And overall, it was an okay book, but people have always said how much more they enjoy The Silent Patient. But Maidens was good enough at the beginning that I figure I might as well give this author another shot. My next book is Elsewhere by Gabrielle Zevin. This was actually a book recommended to me by a friend because of the premise. We were having a conversation recently and she said, oh, this premise is kind of like about something we were talking about. My understanding is it's essentially about what your life is like in the afterlife as you're getting ready to be reincarnated to go back to Earth. This is a juvenile fiction book. So hopefully that still holds up and like the ideas are cool enough, but interested to see what happens because the premise sounds really interesting. I've really been on a contemporary romance kick recently, like for whatever reason, it's doing all the things for me. And my next two books reflect that. The first is The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. My understanding of this book is that the protagonists are a venture capitalist and a Silicon Valley programmer for my understanding and love shenanigans and sues and there's fake dating which is definitely a trope i enjoy in these types of books we're going to continue on with more <laughs> contemporary romance that's novel for this group is the x hex by aaron sterling this one i think actually has some fantasy elements and my understanding is that the protagonist and her love interest are both witches so I think it'll still be cool, like it sounds like a really fun book and excited to see how it goes. My final book is Empire by Paul Stathern. This is the nonfiction book essentially describing the history of empires throughout this world, starting with the ones early in antiquity with the Assyrian Empire, going all the way up to I believe the British Empire in modern day. I am a huge history nerd and I feel like this book should do a pretty good job of cutting across all the different in periods of history that I really find interesting. That is my group three that I will be reading upcoming. I think all of these books have a great potential to interest me and I've definitely been trying to go more towards books that like kind of catch my eye instead of just being like, oh, this looks like a book I should read. I know that this is a lot of books and having to go through even a couple books that I'm just not excited about 
makes 100 books feel like a lot more. With all that said, if you've read any of the books on my list, please comment down below. I'd love to talk about it. If you have any recommendations for my upcoming groups, I want to hear that too. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.